welcome to Dead Man Talking. Before we start tonight's show, I just want to send thoughts and prayers to all you guys and girls over on the East Coast of the US tonight um, with the oncoming threat from Florence. Um, very, very scary and worrying times ahead. And uh, I wish you all the best of luck. Keep safe. Tonight's story, guys, I'm sure you're as excited as I. As ever, please do like, share and comment. And don't forget to hashtag Team Fear. And without further ado, let's get into tonight's story entitled The Scariest Thing in the Woods Control Chapter 3 Let's get straight into that. I've been back at my post for a couple of weeks after, let's call it a situation with those marines. That colonel made an attempt to ruin my rep. It even went as far as, you will never work with the military, again. I told him that's fine by me. I didn't want to be involved in your cover up bullshit anyway. He finished, but I'd better keep my mouth shut or I would regret it. I said don't worry, as I walked out. I have now completed another complete report on the Bigfoot. Another report that no one will probably see. I was glad to see the wolves are alright and that a tall friend was still hanging around and being cool. I was thankful for that. I have surmised these beings just want to be left alone to live their lives. It's a pity humans will not allow it. Bill was here. He got here as fast as he could so he could see the real life cryptid. Tony has been obliging and come out to the forest some. And I asked Bill to please observe him from a distance as I want to make sure he doesn't get used to humans. Oh, Tony, yeah. Well, I said I named the wolves and the DM kind of reminds me of an old friend. Tony is big and scary looking, but under that, he's tame as dishwater. The DM, though, is different. It's not tame, but it's far from the monster that I've been reading they are. But when I sit in the evening relaxing and discussing the chain of events, we talk about the Bigfoot tribe and how they actually might have saved my life. It does tell me they're not all like that. There is a clan in the big thicket area. And they are very aggressive. Rumour has it, they hunt humans. All of this is rumour, and I've only seen creatures that want to be left alone. Man is the only monster I've ever seen. Bill then suggests I go down and take a look. And I tell him, I don't want to be that close to Louisiana. My, are you afraid of the Rougarou? Um, don't tell me, after all you've been through lately. You don't believe? Though if such creatures and things do exist, it would be terrifying. No real monsters live in Louisiana. Just my family. You never told me you had family from there, Jim? I don't talk much about it. Many, many, many bad memories. I'm here to learn, Jim. I want to talk about it. Yes or no, let's just say my father isn't the kind of man when refused to wed and carry on the bloodline of our family. He disowned me. Your mother? Or anyone else? My mother wasn't much different though. She suggested in time I might change my mind. I also have a cousin. Last I heard only he and my father were alive. Couldn't your cousin carry on the line? No. He's simple. Bill says, I'm sorry. Any chance to make amends? No, I say, glancing down. There's a long silence which is broken by Tony yipping and running into the tree line alone with most of the wolves. I then hit a motor coming up the road. Tom is coming up. I greet Tom and introduce him to Bill. Tom thanks me for the reports on the herd movement and the report on the wolves. I tell him it's good to get back on the job. I need some work in rest for a bit, just to get myself lost in this forest to settle my mind. And Tom says no such luck kid. Just got a call from HQ. They have a rogue grizzly at the Shushan Forest. A couple of hikers were killed and two rangers they sent out to trap never returned. They want you in there tomorrow. And I see something else in Tom's eyes. The word is don't screw this up, Jim. People are watching you. Tom leaves a few moments later and I get my gear together. Bill apologises to me. It's my fault. I called you into that camp, Lejean mess. I say not to worry. With this new world opened up to me, I don't know where my next path goes. Right now though, it's time to get ready for a hunt. Let's just hope this is not the start of another unique adventure. I pull up to the ranger station at Shoshon National Forest. 
but when I get out and enter the ranger office, a young ranger asked if he could help me, as he looked up and saw Lou. He told me, uh, Sir, your, uh, your animal needs to wait outside. I told him my name is Jim Johnson. I'm a ranger from Yellowstone, and this is Lou, and he doesn't wait anywhere but with me. I'm here to see Bob, is he in? I have heard of you, Mr. Johnson, the young man said. Nothing good, I'm sure, then, I hear. Does anyone have anything good to say about you? Well, at least not to my face. Bob, how are you? Bob said he was okay, and he says hello to Lou, who wags his towel. He then invites us into his office, and I take a seat. Bob tells me of this big-ass grizzly that's on the run, out there. He goes on to tell me we had two hikers disappear. We found the mess, no question. It was a big bear. One was torn up at the site, and then the girl was dragged off. We followed the blood trail until the brush became too dense. I then sent a trap crew out to set up for him. They never returned, and there's no sign of them. Then we searched by helicopter. I have a young guy here that's a real good shot. He was in the chopper. What he said was real bad, so I knew it was you who we needed. Well, not actually you. I only requested the one with the brains in your little group, as he throws treats to Lou. I laugh and say, you got that right. If I had any brains, I would stay where I was. And we both laugh. Bob and I need to speak to this kid. Bob goes out and tells the ranger at the desk to call David. We need to speak to him. A few minutes later, a young, I'd say 20-year-old, comes into the office. You need to see me, sir? He asks. Bob introduces me, and David shakes my hand. Firm grip. I like that. David, I need you to tell me exactly what happened. The story is simple. I was in the chopper. The pilot and me were searching for any sign of the missing men, and then we saw the bear. Sir, I have never seen a larger animal. This thing was 12 feet tall standing. At least 1,000 to 1,200 pounds. I break in and say, those are Kodiak or polar bear stats. Are you sure about the size and it being a grizzly? Yes, sir, I am. Hump, rounded ears, I mean it was like it wanted to attack the helicopter. I call in and I was given the order to shoot. I put a 30 6 round right between its arms. No effect whatsoever. And so I hit it two more times. It just glared at me. What do you think, sir? My thoughts think of Tony. Could this just be one of his type? Or what? Strange things in these times. How do we fight this big bear? It's big teeth, big claws versus expert shot, and big rifle. The rifle wins, yeah, the rifle wins. I think of hitting Tony with that round in the back. He barely slowed down. A new world, with new rules. What will I learn this time? Jim! Bob yells after Jim. Sorry guys, I, I was just thinking. I guess it's about time to go on that bear hunt, Lou. I swear Lou's eyes glow, that bright yellow, as his towel wags. I tell Bob we will start tomorrow. Got a place for Lou and I to sleep? Bob says inside or outside. The kid's eyes pop open. I say outside, of course. As Bob says, like I didn't see that coming. As we walk outside, a young Native American boy rushes up to me. He says something I've not heard in a long time. Hetemi Honehe. Grandmother must speak to you. What did you call me, son? Hetemi Honohe. It means he. I know what it means, son. Who is grandmother? Shaman or Gijmetu. She must speak to you before you hunt Coda. I look at Bob who says, Don't ask me. I didn't tell anyone you were coming. Well, I guess I have an appointment to keep before I get started. Get in the truck, kid. Over the river and through the woods to Grandmother's house we go. I'm on my way to Wind River to meet with the old shaman that already knows I'm here and what my job is. I thought this was going to be a restful, easy bear hunt. Again, I guess I'm wrong. It looks like I'm in for another strange hunt. I read the book that Bill had given me about cryptids, and, like I was totally surprised to learn about these creatures, I know every place has its stories. My family is from France, and my mother told me of the stories of the fantastic beasts that are past held. I hunted this land for years. I've never seen the like. Yes, you have my thoughts, Race. You know where I come from, and you know what's out there. My thoughts end when I hear a small voice. You don't have yellow eyes. Laughing, I say no, they're hazel. Sometimes green. Why? Why would you say that? I hear the boy say, I thought your eyes were yellow. Again I say no, but my brother, as I nod to Lou, has yellow eyes. He's your brother, the boy asks? Not literally, of course. I have raised Lou from a puppy. He's closer to me than any of my family. 
that I can remember. So yes, we are brothers, in that sense. The boy says, But you are your Henry. No, young man, I am not. The boy looks at me puzzled and turns his attention to Lou. Your brother is a good dog, the boy says. I tell him, you are not his enemy. He knows this. Make no mistake, though, if you were on the other end of those teeth, that's a different story. The conversation ends as we enter the small town. Now on to Grandmother's place we go. I enter the door, and the old woman greets me. Welcome, Mr. Johnson. Or shall I call you, Hetemi Hore? I look back. Jim will do, Grandmother. Are you sure maybe nature touched wouldn't be more your liking? Does it mean the same? Not actually, it's more a general term. You have the blessing of the forest, my child. You are under the eyes of Gijmatu. That is not why you are here, though. You are here to slay Koda. I don't need to tell you your history. This you know, and you will deal with it in your own time. Now is the time to hear what you must do to slay the demon. Your steel will not cut him, and your bullets will not hurt him. There is only one way to kill Koda. First, you must know, he is not a normal bear. He has embraced the darkness of Coyote. He wishes to make the white man pay for the land that we lost many years ago. It will kill all that he sees until he is stopped. I pray that you can stop him and give him rest. Grandmother, my Cheyenne is not real good, but doesn't Koda mean bear? Then you talk like it's a man, not an animal. It is not an animal, my child. The bear is the skin he wears. His mind and his actions are those of my son's son, young Koda. To lay him to rest, you find the skin he wears while he does not wear it. Then you must burn it, and with this, it is sage and I will drive the spirits out with it, and release the man, form, from his curse. And then you will have to kill the man, or he will take another bear skin. I also give this to you. This amulet is blessed, my Gij Matal. It will at least give him pause if you find yourself within his mighty jaws. Go now, and my kitcheners watch over you. I leave with the amulet. Well, boy, I guess the first thing to do is to find the bear, and then try to kill it. Back at the station, I sling my hammock and rest for the night. I dream again of the things I've seen, and again, I'm about to find out just what is the scariest thing in the woods. We enter the woods at dawn, and this is such a beautiful country. Lou and I walk along at peace, at least until we find the area where the hike has disappeared. I examine the briars and find that something bulldozed through it, blood and bits of torn clothing. I followed the carnage to the clearing the rangers were going to place the trap. They had airlifted the body out, but it seems they have left the trap. A standard bear trap no less. I keep following the trail till nightfall. Lou and I decide to bed down for the night. Not knowing this area that well, and my quarry may not be that far away. We make it a cold camp, dried meat and fruit, and I find a good cover place, and we nod off to sleep. And the dream comes. In the dream, I awake starving, so hungry. There is a doe in a field, and I give chase. I yell for Lou to come on. The doe isn't fleeing. And then I notice I'm all alone. Lou, where are you? Lou boy, where are you? I yell. Moments later, I await to Lou licking my face. I'm in a cold sweat. And I say, come on boy, let's get this bear and get the hell out of here. I think this place has a bad spirit. We keep on following the tracks and signs. Today is not yesterday though. There's no birds singing. No small animals around. Lou is tense, and so am I. I can feel this in my bones. Something is watching us. It knows we're here. Most of the day we trek through these woods. It's almost dusk and we come to a large clearing next to a small mountain. With a waterfall, pond and a stream, it must be a tributary to the Wind River. The air gets real still, and a huge brown bear, no grizzly, steps from behind a waterfall that must be hiding in his cave. As he stands up, he is easily the largest bear that I've ever seen. He then speaks out. I am Gitch Koda. Have you come to serve me? No. We have come to stop you. I yell out, unslinging my rifle. I steal those 762s and plant two in his chest, to no avail. Foolish human. Weapons of man cannot harm a god. You are hardly a god, as I try another round to make sure. Again, no effect. Just like with a dogman, I guess we have to do this the hard way. I pull out my Kirkhoise and Lou has circled around him and attacks from behind 
We both rush him. We have to dodge those massive paws or we're dead. Lou is biting and clawing but can't seem to find purchase. My luck is no better. I do a quick dodge but my blades for, for all the good they're doing. They might as well be willow witches. A claw catches me and sends me reeling and there is blood flowing from my side. This fight will end badly. Lou get away from him. Lou boy. And Lou starts to pull back another lucky swing catches him in the shoulder. I see the blood spray and he's thrown several feet back into the bushes. I scream no as I run into the place he's fell. I can't see him. I have to see if my brother is okay. And foolishly I sprint but I am intercepted and find myself in a massive bear hug. Now little hunter you will die and you will make a tasty dinner and your pet Phil will be my dessert. I feel myself lose control. I let out my own feral howl. I feel my muscles starting to tighten. I snarl. But not any snarl. A violent, feral, terrible snarl. But the bear is strong and caught in his arms. I feel myself go weak and then limp. But then he stops. And I hear him say, You are protected. I may not kill you this time. My mind goes in and out of consciousness and I hear him say again, Grandmother gave you that amulet. I may not kill you, but if you die, not by my hands, then I am free of guilt. I remember thinking I could hear the stream. I have lost a lot of blood. Why am I still bleeding? Lou, where are you, boy? Again, the blackness surrounds me, and again I dream of chasing that doe. Am I awake or am I? I'm so hungry. I smell the dough in my mouth, waters. Lou, we have to catch that dough. Lou! Lou! Where's Lou? Lou is gone! No, not my brother. Not my brother! The dough comes to me. I see the sorrowful look in her eyes. I smell the food. That's not venison. That's... Wake up, warrior! I hear. You need to eat. My eyes open. I see the old lady. What? How did I get here? She soon spoons some stew into my mouth. Shh, you must eat. The taste, that's not venison. That's mutton. God, I hate mutton. I smell the strong smell of sage in the room, but not enough to overshadow the mutton. I ask the old woman, is the sage to keep the evil away? She says partly, but mostly to keep you in control. I say, I am in control. What do you mean? Don't worry. And then she says, your wolf didn't return. I know, I tell her. I'm going to make him pay dearly for that. She checks my bandages and says, At least you have started to heal. If you had not been fast healing, you wouldn't have survived. Without the herbs I used, you might not have anyway. Thank you, Grandmother. If not for no other reason than to take my vengeance for my brother. I told you your weapons wouldn't harm him. You must take the skin when he's not wearing it and burn it with the sage. I know, I know. But I had to find the area where I think it is at first, and I think I do. Though it cost Lou his life. Shh, rest. Though your body is knitted back together, it's still raw and sore, she says as she leaves me to my thoughts. How long till the full moon? Should I leave and bring Tony back with me? No, he's not ready, and I don't want another death on my hands from a creature that trusts me. And I clothe myself, no weapons, all must be back there. Where Lou's body is, when I walk out, I feel the breeze. I see a lone dog in a nearby field. Beautiful animal, tasty animal. No, I am in control. The young boy that brought me here in the first place runs up to me. Hatame Argente, Koda, come. I look for the great bear, the skinwalker, but all I see is a man walking towards me with a purpose. Feeling better, hunter. I look at him and fiend my injury to be more than it is. So, I take it a little man like you becomes a huge bear. I have learned the power of the gods. Coyote himself showed me this. I came here to tell you your life. I will not spare it again. Your bones will rest beside your mongrel. Control is out of the window. I rush him and hit him as hard as I can, but he flies back about five feet. Get up, I say. I am nowhere near finished with you. He rolls to his feet and produces a large knife. It's one of my cookeries. He doesn't have the fighting prowess in his human form as he does in bear, but it's still very strong. 
I hit again for good measure and then place a kick up the side of his head. Pity you can use the knife like you use your claws. I'm going to beat you to death. You're not going to wear that hide again. He laughs through the bloodstained teeth. No matter how much you beat on me, by nightfall I will be back and healing and heading out to kill you again. I hit him again and again and he still laughs and then the unexpected happens. A howl splits the battle. It's long and powerful and I recognise it immediately as a large smile appears upon my face. I hit Coda again and look back to see my Lou, my brother, break from the tree line. Lou is dragging something. What the hell? It looks like a bearskin. I hear Coda gasp and try to get around me to Lou to retrieve his magic pelts. Instead, he catches my foot in his gut. The old lady comes from her house to me and she yells, Bring it to me! Bring it to me! Lou, take it to the old lady. He drags the skin to her immediately. She brings out a brand from her fireplace and sets it on fire and starts to chant and throw sage on it. Coda again tries to slip by me and again I knock him on his ass, though this time with different results. He's bleeding. I pick him up and knock him down again and this time he stays there whimpering. As the fur fully ignites and is reduced to ash. I pick up Coda and drive my fist into his gut. You are under arrest for crimes against man and against nature. I drop the whimpering mess as the old woman says, Warrior, you must kill him. I look at the mess on the ground. I'm in control. I can't kill a helpless person, no matter what he has done. She rushes forward with a knife in hand. I easily stop her. We can't. He will be in prison many years. The white man will not punish what they don't understand. I know she's right. I hear a snarl and a, almost before I can turn around, Lou charges and one bites on his throat. Or oh, what was his throat? It's gone as he bleeds out on the ground. I guess Lou has taken his own vengeance. At least I maintained control. What I had thought would be an easy hunt had turned out to be a nightmare. I had thought I'd lost Lou and that would have been a price too high to have paid. I am back at the park HQ. I give Bob the teeth of the bear and let him know there is no more giant grizzly out there. He accepts the proof and wires in that the matter is closed. The night before Lou and I head home, Lou and I visit the local bar. Bob and Neat, I tell the barkeep. And trust me, I'm in no mood to have to keep explaining myself. He serves me my drink and there's snow falling when a woman walks into the bar. She is strikingly beautiful, easily the most beautiful Native American woman I'd ever seen. If not the beautiful I'd ever seen, period. She walks to me, giving me a long look and she turns. Though before she can speak, this large man says, Hey you squaw, you know you can't drink in here, or come over and sit with me. I put my drink down, leave her alone or this gets messy. Do not concern yourself warrior, for even prey can defend itself. She turns to the man and almost faster than my eyes can watch it, she kicks the man in the face, hard enough that I hear the jaw snap. She walks back to me and sweetly asks, may I sit down? She sits next to me rubbing Lou's massive head, saying you're a sweet boy and pretty puppy. I introduce myself as Jim Johnson. And she smiles and that makes the air even warmer and says, I am cool Dawn. Well, just Dawn. I would hardly consider you prey. She says then you would be the first man in history that doesn't consider a woman prey and the first Hoenche that doesn't consider a Vatsuva not as prey. I come to talk with you warrior and tell you that you must be on guard. Gichemen Tuz has chosen you as his champion and you have two great evils to deal with. One you will know, one you do not. One from the north and the other from the south. I will help you when I can, but my service is limited. Goodbye warrior, I will see you again. She rises and pets Lou one more time and then walks out the bar. I sit there sipping my drink and wondering how much longer can I do this before I lose control. Wow, wow, fantastic couple of chapters there from uh, my great friend and writer Jim Lawrence. Um, absolutely love this series. Um, good news for you all as well folks, Jim emailed me yesterday to let me know 
that there is a brand new chapter ready to roll. Hopefully we'll be receiving that today and get that up as soon as possible. As some of you may know if you're over at the Cabin in the Woods group on Facebook, um, I was recently demonetized uh, on the channel for various reasons that I'm still trying to clear up with YouTube, much like uh, Creepy Ghost Stories channel, Southern Cannibal, Slumber Reads, Fit Cundiff, uh, the list goes on. Um, you know, the strangest thing about all of this, uh, besides the fact that you don't get a human being to clear up the questions you need answered so you can actually rectify whatever the problem is, is that they actually cut my monetization on uh, International Mental Health Awareness Day. Um, now, this is not some sob story, but I, I suffer with quite a lot of mental health and depression problems, and I know that I'm not alone there um, with a couple of the guys also that have been demonetized. And the fact that YouTube gives no you know, particular response team to deal with the problems that we now have and face as a channel um, is disgusting. Because, you know, people have put their lives and, uh, and soul into making these channels and the content, like myself. Um, it really is time-consuming and a lot of hard work, but wholesomely, you know, it's worth it at the end of the day. Speaking with everyone is fantastic and, and interesting and shocking sometimes, as you know. But to have that sort of, you know, cut away from us is a joke. And I think YouTube needs to wake up because they're losing their core audiences. If anything they are pushing away the people that are willing to put in the effort the people that are willing to do the groundwork to build a fantastic channel which then will draw more you know more viewers and in turn youtube will make more money with adverts um yeah that's that i'm not going to waffle on too much um i mean even so just to point out they are still running adverts on this channel but i'm not receiving a penny of it um yeah i'm not going to carry on but Bleak times ahead, guys. Um, I will keep uploading to this channel. There's no way in hell I'm stopping. Um, I love you all. Your support and kind words really do help me out on a day-to-day -day basis, to say, with my depression and bipolar and everything. Um, yeah, we're not going anywhere. Of course, I have got a Patreon page set up. I'm just arranging a few things with particular writers so I can start uploading consistently to that and get a few different tiers of rewards. Um, I will post a link to that very soon. As ever, guys, please do let me know down below what you thought. Please do like and share. It really does help build this channel and the community. And as ever, don't forget to hashtag Team Fear. I hope you're all well and happy and have made it through the worst of Hurricane Florence. And above all, remember, be safe, not sorry.